Hey, it's time for part four of Jonah. What a great study this has been. And I, this last chapter is the epitome of all of us. This, this, the apex comes to the whole lesson, the whole meaning of the book of Jonah, that we see the focus is not really even Jonah. It's not Nineveh. It's not the big well, the story of the fish that swallows him up. It's all about the mercy and the grace of God. And this is the lesson that Jonah's got to get. To get into chapter 4, what we have is a discussion that's going on between Jonah and the Lord. Uh, in fact, the Bible tells us Jonah's displeased, but not only is he displeased, it says he's angry. Uh, so here he is sitting, and he's left the city, he's gone to the east side, he's built him a little booth. Uh, while he's there, the Lord sends this flowering gourd plant or whatever it is that covers up the whole of the, sh gives, giving him great well, great shade, you know, covers him, so he's uh, he's, he's 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 taken care of. But in the night, then the the Lord sends uh, a worm to eat that up. So when the sun comes up next day, everything's wilted and died. You know, something has attacked the main stem. But there's worm or worms, a horde. We don't know, uh, but whatever, a swarm. But it, it's it's gone, and there's no 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 peace for Jonah. On top of that, the Bible says the Lord sends a strong wind. Now, you would think in the desert that a wind would be a nice thing, but this isn't a nice thing. This is a, like we call a Sirocco wind, which is that desert wind, which is hot. Uh, I, re I remember traveling in, in, in Israel and in the Middle East at different times, like going across the Sinai and what that's like when you get out and you're, you're out there and, and it's dry and it's hot and even the wind is just baking. Uh, you found that in Jericho one time. We stopped in Jericho. We were there in the summertime, uh, which wasn't a real wise trip to make in July. But we were there and it was like 130 degrees. I'm not lying. That's, that's not an ex exaggeration. 130 degrees. You should get off. And even the wind as we're walking around was just, it was just depressive and it was hot. And it, it's, 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 uh, this is something that Jonah's having to deal with. He, these three things are, they're happening. And the Lord's given him a lesson. The part of this lesson is obviously God's a merciful God. And in it interesting that in, in the midst of this attitude issue that Jonah was having, right in the midst of that, he's whining about this and complaining and upset that Nineveh's repented and he's going through all this. But catch this. Look how God's handling Jonah. You know, same way he handled Nineveh. He's handling him with, with compassion. He's handling him with, with grace. He's handling him literally with mercy. And I think so often in our own lives when we get into these, these kind of situations, we, we'll just, for a lack of better terminology, call them our personal pity parties. When we're, we're in that moment, how the, even God, he's being patient with us. He's being compassionate with us. He's loving us. He's trying to urge us to cast our anxieties and our, and our cares upon him. But here's Jonah in the midst of that, that it's, it's own little self issue there. Uh, he's not pleased with God. He's, 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 uh, he hasn't found the place to, to be pleased with what pleases God because what pleases God in this situation is absolutely displeasing to Jonah. What's going on? Obviously, we've talked about that if uh, Nineveh uh, is not judged, then it's less likely that uh, they will uh, that the Syrian armies and the Ninevites will come and trample under Israel and, and, and the nation which Jonah loves. We used the illustration last week of Paul where he says in the book of Romans that I wish I were cursed for my own brother's sake. Uh, I think there's a national uh, love and patriotism of the highest order for God's covenant people. Uh, there are prophecies that Jonah is fully aware of with Abadiah, Mike, and these other prophets, minor prophets we call them. There's nothing minor about them. But they've already prophesied that Israel, if they don't repent, is going to pay a price from the Assyrians. So here's God commissioning J J Jonah on this mission. I think out of that you can see how God is how God is moving over the nations. And you, you have to understand in our own life how God is sovereign and sovereignly moving. So there may be times of discomfort in my own life or maybe even displeasure with how, what has happened. But you have to realize that you pull back the, 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 the curtains and there's God moving. And God is sovereign and God is supernaturally working in all of humanity. And, and God, the Bible says, you know, that God is, is compassionate over all his works in the, in the book of Psalms. What's he so mad about? I think some of that's that natural patriotism might be some other issues I've dealt with in my own life. One simple little thing we, we so want to overlook is that element of pride in our own life. Maybe Jonah's sitting there thinking, great, I went in and I delivered the message. God's going to send judgment. And now God didn't send judgment. What does that make? I have lost face. You know, what are they going to say about me? He's a false prophet. Why didn't God send judgment? You said he was going to send judgment. So I think those issues are involved. There might even be some other things that, that underlie that, uh, you know, that uh, in his mind or thing. Hey, 
you know, God, you should have sent judgment because, you know, we've been preaching to your people and they haven't repented yet. And here's the Ninevites repenting. If you just sent judgment here and the, and, and the nation of Israel had seen you send that judgment, then they probably would repent. Again, just kind of bear with me in all this. Uh, but ultimately, I think that Jonah's a, a, a lot like us. He just doesn't recognize the sovereignty of God and how he's moving in, in other ways and in other levels. We, we just don't see the grand plan. It really just boils down to bad theology. We don't fully have a comprehension. God is omnipotent. Not only is he, is he potent, powerful in my life, he's all powerful. He, not only is he omnipresent, uh, he, it's, it's just present in my life. He's present everywhere. And his compassion is over all his works. And we miss that so many times. In Habakkuk, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I think because we really don't understand um, the big picture. You know, we come up with bad theology. And our bad theology will always lead us to despair. Our bad theology always will lead us to depression. When we fail to realize that, God, you're a faithful God. You're faithful over all your works. And I'm just one aspect of that. And yes, please understand, I'm not denying the fact that God is intimately involved in your life. And I do believe he intimately works in each of our lives as individuals. But it all fits into the grander scheme of what he's doing in the cosmos, what he's doing in the world. And, and I think sometimes we develop our little mindsets, our little ideas, and they're so, they're so focused around our world instead of God's world and what, what God is up to. We kind of think this whole thing that we're the center of the universe, and we're not. The Lord of glory is the center of the universe. So I think we're sitting here, we're looking at Jonah, and he's angry, and he's upset. It says that in verse 2 and 3, he's displeased, he's angry, you know. Uh, so m maybe he's just overcome uh, at, th at this point, and it obviously is. He just says, Lord, take away my life. I think it's a little different from where we saw with Elijah when he gets to that point. I, I think Elijah really did uh, have a concept that, uh, yes, it wasn't, he, he didn't see this God's sovereignty over the nations that we preached about recently. But I, I think that uh, he really believed that there, there was nobody left but him, and it, and, and it was all getting ready to be done with. Again, not seeing the bigger picture of God and what God was doing. But Elijah, you know, you don't see him angry, arguing, you know, with God at this point in, in this kind of same manner that you see. That you, that you see him at, uh, at Jonah at. God prepares the, 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 the plant. God prepares the worm. God prepares this, this scorching east wind. Revised version kind of rightly changed it to a sultry east wind. I mean, it's, it's a heavy kind of Sirocco wind. And here's, here he is, uh, and, and the voice of the Lord comes to him. In verse 8, he's now just, I'm ready to die. I'm just done. I'm, I'm kill me. Uh, and the Lord says, are you doing well to be angry? over a gourd, you know? And I'd, I'd just reply with something like, I, I do well to be angry even unto death. Still justifying himself. And then Jehovah talked to him about this. He said, you know, you had pity on the gourd, which you didn't plant, which you didn't labor over, you didn't grow it. It just came up in the night and it perished in the night. Should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, where there are more than six score thousand that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and the, and, and the cattle also? I was going to say, I could destroy the whole thing, but should I not have pity? You're, all, you're, you're, you're sad because what you love, that plant, this, this, this gourd plant that grew up, uh, obviously provided shade and fragrance and whatever else came off of it to, to comfort him. He said, you're mad about that, you know, and you're upset about that. I'm, I'm, we're gonna, we're, we could judge this whole city, and, and aren't you concerned about the lives of even the children that are there, much less the cattle? I mean, you don't like the adults, obviously. You know? And then you see pretty much in that context the grand scheme to which the whole book has been moving. You know, uh, uh, the, the revelation comes of the divine compassion and the grace of God. I think, word, I think the word mercy in, in the Hebrew language is the word has said, and it's really a covenant word. It deals with all those aspects, not just that uh, I don't get what I deserve. It's that God moves in compassion with me. God moves in, it's not just kind of, okay, I'll let that go. No, God's moving supernaturally in our hearts with mercy. God's giving us a, 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 a glimpse of his covenant love. And, and it goes so much further than what I think we can even understand with our, 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 our English language, where God is uh, uh, binding himself to us, loving us, nurturing us. And, and you see it with Jonah, how God's doing that with him, as he's done with, with, with the Ninevites. So you see here the compassion of God. 
as he moves over repentant. I mean, there are these people are repentant and they're wicked people. I mean, uh, and he says, hey, I'm showing my mercy here. And you're upset about a plant. Shouldn't you be upset about souls? I think all too often that boy, that nails so many of us in the church right on the head. We're so dis displeased with God because we didn't get something we wanted from God. He didn't heal this. He didn't take care of that. It didn't look like he's doing anything in that regard. And so we're upset with God when we ought to be broken hearted over a lost world. People without God, people who face judgment. God is slow to punish. He's quick to pardon when there's repentance. But that just doesn't seem to enter into our thought life. Now we need to come to a place, you know, of repentance. And I think that's the heart of what the Lord's closing this book book with and, and kind of bring it all to this, 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 this point. Hey, Jonah's pity for the gourd is one thing. God's pity for Nineveh is what really ought to be about. And it's almost like the book just ends abruptly. And I say, it's kind of like the mic drop, you know, okay, boom. There's no need for further discussion here. You know, there's no need for, for us to have a, a, a debate on theology. I'm a merciful and compassionate God. I'm being merciful with you. I've been merciful with them. Let's leave the rest up to God's hand. But I think there's more than we won't get into. To, 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 there's more for you to get into as you discuss the lesson tonight and, and talk about those issues together. But Jonah is a tremendous type in Scripture. Obviously, we've talked about the, the type of, of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and how that uh, Jesus told the, gent the, the people of his day, uh, the Jews, that, hey, uh, this wicked and, and evil adulterous generation requires sign, but no sign will be given but the sign of Jonah. Well, that's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what a great type. And, I mean, man, it stands out moments, the apex moment of of, uh, of the New Testament and of all, all, all of creation now is that here we have this divine, divine Savior who's waiting to forgive the wickedness of not just the Jews, but all Gentiles. So you see, you see it. But Jonah also serves as a unique type of a, of uh, the nation of Israel itself, because as you watch him move through through his life, you can see the nation of Israel as it moves through time, from Abraham to the to the glorification uh, of the end times of the Lord Jesus' return. You kind of see Jonah kind of is a is a shadow of that. All right, and a shadow member you have you have the figure, and then you have the shadow. The shadow is usually much larger than 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 the, the than the figure that it's that it's cast off of. And so you see, lone Judah, lone Jonah. As, as a Hebrew nationalist, as there he is as, as a prophet of God. But if you follow the shadow, you see the prophetic picture, how clear it becomes. Because like Jonah, you know, as you, as you follow his life, he, he, he gets this calling from God and then he becomes disobedient to that calling. All right. Uh, the second thing about that, is Jonah, you see him being removed from his land, runs to Tarshish, gets get on the ship, and he goes. Israel out of their land as Jonah was. The third element of that would be a, a finding refuge with the Gentiles, as the Jews did for centuries, you know, uh, uh, as Jonah did. At the same time, number four would be everywhere they go, it's a trouble to the Gentiles. Like Jonah was on the ship because of their presence there, his presence there, there was storms and there was trouble until they 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 cast him out uh, by by the seamen. Uh, I think the sixth point would be, just as Jonah was miraculously preserved, you know, in the midst of the calamities, uh, in the deep, calling on the Lord in repentance and rededication, uh, so so will Israel as they're cast into the deep of the end times when the nations of the world will be around them as you study the Old Testament prophecies, as you read scriptures, and how that God in the midst of all that allows all this to happen to bring them back to a covenant place. You see that with Jonah being going through all these things, but ultimately finding salvation as he cries out from the depths, you know, in the deep. Uh, uh, and his final words are, salvation is of Jehovah in, in his prayer there. The Jews will ultimately see the Lord Jesus whom they have, who is who was crucified by the hand of sinners? And at one point, the scripture says, uh, "Where'd you have these scars?" Like in Ezekiel, and he says, "I was wounded in the house of my friends." Jesus will 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 be revealed to the Jews. One hundred forty four thousand will go out to the Gentile nations from that. It's it's a great picture again of Jonah as he goes to the Gentile Nineveh to deliver this message of of of, of, of judgment coming. Find, find salvation in Jehovah, find salvation in Jesus. So just as Jonah in the end becomes the missionary to the Gentiles, so the Jews become missionaries ultimately to the Gentile nation. So again, that's a whole lot I just dumped on you right there. You can peel it off a little bit later. But the beauty of all this is, is that God is, the heart of this book, remember, is about the merciful grace, compassion of God. I hope 
that you have in your own life come to a place where you're no longer bickering with God about the issues, but you're seeking God's wisdom and, his, and, and, his, and seeking understanding from him and allowing the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to the things that we and you and I, that we need to see that are that present in our life. It's one thing for me to be in a place of complaining or even just tolerating some stuff I'm dealing with. It's another thing to be moving in through my life with a heart set on, hey, what is God's will in this in my life today? Where is God taking me in my life to this today? And who is God wanting me to minister to as he speaks to me? That compassion and that mercy, where is it going out of my life today? At? Not about just about what am I getting from God, but what is God doing in me? Hallelujah for the mercy. And what is God doing through me? I want to be faithful servant to the Lord. And, and these are days, I mean, I mean, we're like wicked Nineveh in so many different ways that we can have a, a message of grace. So let's, let's, let's not be afraid to tell about the, the judgments of God, but let's also be willing to realize that God grants mercy to the, wick, the most wicked of people. And we are such when we get honest with ourselves about where we are in the world for God. So a great study. I hope that you're getting some things in your own heart and mind from this that God is doing and working a little bit of freshness and, and uh, uh, revival in your own heart as you look at, at, at Jonah and the book as a whole and see the mercy of God. Hey, God bless you. It's been a great, great study. Uh, may God use it in your life. Praying for you. Believing God for great things in your life.